I would think as it got uh, closer to the second half of the season, we knew we were a pretty good club. Um, we, I, I think we finished in second place. And uh, because we finished in second place, there was a big distance between us and the first place club, Sherbrooke. They were the stacked team in the league, and they were the prohibitive favorite, and they were the favorite all along. They loaded up at the trade deadline and seemed like every team sent them their best player. But uh, um, you know, we, we played really well in the, in the playoffs. First round was a very hard-fought series against Shawinigan. took us seven games to win it. I know I took a five-minute major in the, in the seventh game and almost cost us a series, uh, but we, we prevailed. And, uh, and then the second round we played in Shakutami, and that was Guy Carboneau, uh, uh, his team. He was a great scorer. You know, everybody thinks of him as a defensive player, but he was a great scorer. And uh, Dan Dau, who was our captain, he really did a great job in that series shutting Guy Carboneau down. And it's funny, as they went into pro, Danny became a little bit more of a scorer and Guy became a little bit more of a, of a checker. And then in the final round, we played Sherbrooke, and that was a classic series. You know, people who, who live in Cornwall and, and remember that team, they'll remember that series the most. It really was, uh, uh, it had everything in it. It had, uh, you know, it had intrigue, it had great goaltending, it had horrible goaltending, it had... Uh, Big blowout uh, wins, big blowout losses. It had uh, a fantastic final sixth game, and um, uh, we uh, we did a, a great job. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the credit has to go to our our coach Doug Carpenter. He did a he did a spectacular job with a group of, of young kids. Um, you know, teaching us. Yeah, so a lot of the credit has to go to our coach uh, Doug Carpenter. I thought he did. A great job in the two years that I had him, um, uh, really developing uh, competitiveness in our team, um, giving us discipline, and um, really teaching us how to compete. Uh, I thought those were the three ingredients that our team had in a, in a great, great abundance, and that was largely a derivative of, of his coaching. You know, we had good, good players, too, as well. Um, the, the two superstars on that team were Dave Izard, uh, the overage defenseman who would have played in the National Hockey League if, you know, it wasn't uh, the late uh, or the early 80s, the late 70s in the era where big was better. Uh, Dave was small. He was a great shooter. He was a great playmaker, skater, uh, just a heck of a guy, you know. Uh, passed away uh, a number of years ago and it was a great loss to the community of, uh, of Cornwall and to all of us that played with him. He was such a great teammate and friend. Um, but uh, yeah, he was a super, super player. And of course we had Dale Howarchuk. And Dale Howarchuk was, you know, 16 year old uh, at the start of the season. I think he turned 17 uh, by the time we'd won the Memorial Cup. But, you know, he just did things that were so effortless. Um, I played on his line and you'd, you'd get the puck on your stick and you go, how did that get there? He was that type of player. You know, he would come down on a breakaway and goaltenders would be sure he was going one way and he'd put the puck in an exact opposite spot. He had such a talent for uh, deception. And, um, you know, he was a great skater and a great playmaker and a great shooter. So uh, he had everything going for him. And he was a uh, leading scorer in our playoff uh, run. I think he won the MVP of, uh, of the playoffs. Um, Dave Izzard won the MVP of the Memorial Cup. So uh, it was a spectacular group, and uh, those guys were the leaders. But they had a lot of other guys that, that went along with them. We had a really good uh, team. You know, we had Mike Corrigan who got drafted by uh, Detroit and played a couple games in, in Detroit. He was a tough winger that played with uh, Dale Howarchuk uh, and myself. Uh, Scott Arneal was a rookie. He played really well uh, in a third line role on that team um, with Newell Brown who ends up coaching the Vancouver Canucks and various other teams in the National Hockey League. Pat Harris, another Cornwall guy who played on that line. Our second line was uh, Jill Cropo, who ended up being the fire chief in, uh, in, uh, in Cornwall's great scorer. Uh, he played with Dan Dau and Rod Willard, who ended up playing pro uh, uh, in Toronto's organization. So uh, lots of really good players at the forward position on defense. We had 
Davies are. We had Fred Arthur, who was a first rounder. Hartford ended up playing in Philly, um, and now is a neurosurgeon. So, uh, you know, really a, 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 a quite a an intriguing uh, guy. But he was big, he was strong, and and it was quite good at moving the puck as well. And you added that on uh, to uh, Fred Boimstruck, who was a, a rookie defenseman, ended up. The next year, or two years later, going into the NHL with the Toronto Maple Leafs as an underage, uh, he played really well for us. And an unheralded defenseman, Robert Savard, who ended up winning three Memorial Cups, two with us, one with uh, the Kitchener Rangers. And in that year, he scored the overtime winner in in uh, in uh, Regina. He hadn't scored a goal, I don't think, in the playoffs, and I don't think he'd scored much during the season. But he went end to end. Uh, in the overtime against Peterborough to score the winner and and win the uh, win the championship for us. Well, I remember when we started the tournament. We beat uh, the first game. We beat Regina 5-2, and or it might have been even 6-2. Uh, but we we played really good, and 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 we were the better team in the game. I don't think there was any question about it. But when we played them the second time, we played them in Regina, at home. Uh, in those days, you played the, uh, the, 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 the three teams, you played twice against everybody. The second game, they were in our end in the warm-up. There was going to be a, a battle royale, and I think they caught us a little bit off guard, and they just smoked us. They beat us, I think, 10-1 or 10-2. So we needed to be uh, back on, uh, on our game against Peterborough to, to have a chance to be there. And you know, A lot of people will say that there's a lot of controversy that Peterborough didn't play their top line in the third period, but we were down by a goal going into the third period, and we had a five-on-three. So, uh, you know, it wasn't as big an upset uh, for us to win that game um, as people make out. We only lost to them in the preliminary round by one goal. I think we lost 7-6 uh, in the earlier game against uh, uh, Peterborough. So even though I thought they were, they were really a good team, uh, any team can be beaten in a one-game uh, matchup, and, and we found a way to do it. Robert Savard was... Uh, you know, from Azilda uh, uh, up near Sudbury, and you know I played with Robert my entire career uh, in uh, uh, in Cornwall, and uh, you know he was a good defenseman. Uh, he probably was our number four defenseman behind Davies, our uh, Fred Arthur, first rounder, Fred Boimstruck, who played underage with the Leafs, uh, and and he was the unassuming fourth defenseman, and he was a real quality player, and he went end to end in that overtime to score the goal. Uh, you know, certainly, I would think he would say it's the biggest goal of, uh, of, of his life. And uh, it was huge. It was almost surreal. When we won, it was like, can you believe it? It happened. But uh, it was great. We got to have a great celebration in Regina and that celebration when we got back to Cornwall, uh, even really when we got back to the airport in Montreal. Uh, there were thousands of fans to meet us there. They lined the 401 uh, from basically the Ontario border back to uh, to Cornwall uh, with uh, fans of our team. So, and we had a great uh, procession in the in the city when we won it. It was really a, a great memories for sure. Yeah, we would have been the top-rated team in the country for quite a bit of the year. I mean, we won the Quebec League, uh, the regular season championship. Uh, the biggest change was Doug Carpenter left to pursue his pro career, and Bob Kilger, a, uh, a retired referee from Cornwall, came in uh, to coach us. And I give Bob a lot of credit. Uh, while he, he wasn't uh, the tactician or the disciplinarian uh, that uh, 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 Doug Carpenter was, what he was really good at, he was really good at figuring out our team. And we had a lot of guys as young 18 and 19 year olds that knew that kind of were a little bit full of ourselves. And uh, I give Bob a lot of credit for for guiding us through some pretty tumultuous times there. Uh, in that playoff run, we went seven games in the first round, seven games in the second round against Sherbrooke, first round against Quebec. And, and we could have gotten beaten in either of those, but we found a way uh, to get through. And, and Bob uh, worked some magic uh, by, you know, maybe mixing up the lines and getting people like myself to play a little bit more disciplined and all those sorts of things that you need to do to win a championship. We, we, we beat uh, Trois-Rivières in, uh, in the finals uh, that year, but it was a... Uh, a pretty rough ride to get to the Memorial Cup. When we got to the Memorial Cup, though, we'd been there before, and I think that was a huge advantage uh, for our group. The Western team was uh, Grant Fuhrer and the Victoria Cougars. 
it was really an interesting time for, for my parents. You know, uh, my youngest brother, Eric, was, I think, uh, nine years old at the time. And he was a cute little kid, but he had a, a really nice sports jacket on. He had the Kitchen Rangers logo on one and the Cornwall Royals logo on the other. But uh, secretly, he told me later, he said, I was cheering for you. I Man, I was great for, I know, the next year when they played uh, Sherbrooke in the finals. Uh, I was glued to the game, and I was really hoping that Louis was going to get a chance to, to win, and, uh, and they did. That was, uh, again, you know, their second time there, so everybody's a little bit more comfortable. You know what the, what the drill is, and uh, I, I think it really helps as you get further and further into the tournament. Yeah, you know, I, I can't really say that we... We looked at it quite like that. It was trying to find a way to win, trying to find a way uh, to win the championship. Uh, being in Ontario, we were all Ontario kids. So uh, the fact that the one before was in Western Canada, this time we had a lot more of our family members there. So I think it made it a little bit more special from that standpoint. So, you know, I look back at that, that, that group of guys um, and, I, and that's what I think about. I think about you know being able to share it with your parents, being able to share it uh, with your family members, and uh, um, you know that was pretty cool. Well, you know, I think what happens a lot um, with with people who've had good coaches is you remember a lot of what they did. Uh, you take a lot of the good things that they brought, and you you certainly implement them into your play. Uh, in terms of discipline, determination, uh, preparation, all those sorts of things. Uh, and it seems a little bit more logical when the time comes where you can't play anymore. Um, I mean, for me, I wanted to continue in the game. Uh, I had a great example in my father, uh, who was a coach as well, so it wasn't foreign to me to, to be running sorts of uh, drill. I used to run his training camp uh, when he was coaching uh, major junior camp uh, hockey and I worked hockey schools and and all those sorts of things so those things are all part of the development process of you becoming a coach so again I'm very thankful for the upbringing I had I'm very thankful for the people who have I had uh, coaching me along the way and um, they really do shape you. Dale Howard Chuck uh, was was a big part of that uh, championship I mean, he was the best player in the country by a by a long shot that year. He won the Rookie of the Year in the International Hockey League the next year. Um, but we also had a great young kid come in, Doug Gilmore. And Doug, he'd been hurt most of the year. So, you know, it was like a, it was like a trade deadline acquisition. Uh, Dougie coming in, in in the back in the playoffs because he really came into his own in the playoffs for us. And that Memorial Cup game, I looked at it uh, about 20 years after we played it. and and. The guys that jump out at you in the game, I mean, obviously, Howard Chuck is obvious, but Doug Gilmore was outstanding in that Memorial Cup championship game. I think he scored three goals in the game, and uh, he was just magical. So, you know, very good signs of, of what was to come. But it was, a, it was a good group. You know, we had good scoring on the wings from older guys, John Kirk. Uh, Jill Cripo, uh, they were both great scorers. You know, we, we had uh, Scotty Arneal, myself, who kind of gave a, a, a real good uh, uh, second line after the Howard check line with those two scorers. Our third line had Dan Frawley, who became great NHLer uh, with uh, Pittsburgh and Buffalo. Uh, you know, he, he was uh, a captain in the National Hockey League, so he was a good player. Uh, Dougie Gilmore uh, was obviously on that line. Roy Russell. It takes a whole group of guys uh, to win a championship, and whether it was Steve Mulaski, Gerard Pelche, uh, you know, guys that played in our fourth line, or whether it was uh, Craig Halliday or Mark Lalone, the fourth and fifth defenseman for us, everybody has to play a part in it. Um, we picked up a goalie in that uh, Memorial Cup, Corrado Mikolev, and he was really important to, to us winning. But getting there, we needed Joe Mantioni and, and Tommy Grovac to, to be good goaltenders uh, for us. So, you know, it, it, it's neat to see uh, when you win, you remember people. You know, that, that memory becomes that much more entrenched in your mind. And uh, we've had a couple of chances to, to get together since then. Hopefully we'll get a, a chance to do it here again when the 40th anniversary comes around for these teams. But it's, it's always nice to, to see the guys that played uh, with you and, and enjoy the memory that you had of winning together.